Today I'm going to talk about the end of the year volatility and what I expect the dollar to do this week, the Bank of Japan meeting, the U.S. economic indicators, and the European Union indicators. Hello everyone, this is Marshall Giller out of Investment Research at FX Primus, bringing you the week in focus for the week beginning December 19th. Well, as the year draws to a close, the data also quiets down and central bankers go on holiday. This leaves relatively little on the calendar from now until next year. That doesn't mean, though, that you can relax completely. Now, it's true that the last two weeks of the year are usually quieter than average, but in 2008 and again in 2014, they were the most volatile weeks of the year. It all depends on what happens. Generally speaking, I expect the dollar to consolidate somewhat this week after its sharp gains last week following the FOMC meeting. Now, last year, when the Fed hiked rates on Wednesday, uh, December 16th, Euro dollar bottomed out on the Friday following the move and then recovered during the following week to end a bit higher than it was before the rate hike, as you can see in this graph here. However, Last year, the committee revised down its forecast for future rates at the same time as it hiked. That might have offset some of the impact of the rate hike. This year, on the contrary, it raised its forecast while hiking. That would amplify the rate hike's effects rather than offsetting it. That should reduce the room for mean reversion this week. Now, the big risk event of the week is today, Monday. The U.S. Electoral College meets to formally elect the U.S. president. In the U.S., people don't actually vote directly for the president. They vote for electors, who then meet and they vote for the president. Now, usually the whole process is just a formality. This time, though, is the first time ever in history that some electors have tried to organize a protest vote. It remains to be seen, though, uh, whether they can actually get together, get the required 37 Republican votes to prevent President-elect Trump from taking office. It's certainly a low probability event, but if it did happen, it would mean absolute chaos for the market. Other major events for the U.S. this week include today's speech by Fed Chair Yellen about the U.S. job market. That's likely to be bullish for the dollar, in my humble opinion. There's a cluster of U.S. economic indicators around the opening on Thursday, when the third estimate of U.S. third quarter GDP, the durable goods orders, personal income and spending, and the leading indicator are released. They're expected to be mixed, not enough to bolster expectations of higher rates, but not bad enough to diminish expectations either. That's another reason why I expect to see the dollar consolidate this week. For the yen, the key event will be Tuesday's Bank of Japan meeting. There's almost no likelihood of any change in policy. That means the divergence in monetary policy between the Bank of Japan and the Fed remains intact, and I expect the weaker yen trend to continue. For Europe, the week opens today with the IFO indices. They're expected to be slightly higher, which could support the euro somewhat. EU consumer confidence on Wednesday isn't expected to change enough to change anyone's expectations. Finally, there's nothing major on the schedule for Britain this week. In the absence of any news, we can perhaps expect the pound to recover some, but not all of its losses against the dollar, while the euro sterling oscillates just in its 83.50 to 84 channel. This is Marshall Gittler, out of Investment Research at FX Primus. Get more market insights on our education pages and turn your trading ideas into action with FX Primus, the safest place to trade.